look, buddy, you're not going to hell for wanting to have a crucifix in your house. You're not going to hell for wanting to engage in ancient worship and not modern revivalism. Believe and trust in the promises of Christ and not what your evangelical family has to say. What's up, Brendan? This episode of 1517 Films is exclusively for you. So stick around. Now, everybody else might be confused because I didn't say, hey, what's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films. No, this video is something I've never done before. It's for one viewer, a young 15-year-old boy who reached out from an evangelical family and said, I like what I'm seeing inside confessional Lutheranism, and this is where I would like to be, but... But my family tells me that looking at a crucifix is going to send me to hell. My family tells me that Jesus' words and promises are really actually just symbols. And it's my act of obedience as a Christian to do these things. I've been where you are, buddy. I know. I wasn't always Lutheran. I went into all the charismatic evangelical camps trying to find this authentic Book of Acts Christian faith when I was younger, just like you. And I'm 39 years old now, and you know what I've learned? That authentic, charismatic, faithful Book of Acts church still exists today. And it exists in church bodies where the word is rightly preached and the sacraments are rightly administered. And I have no problem in my conscience saying that that exists inside the confessional Lutheran church. And you're figuring that out. You're going to have to go through the same problems and turmoils that I went through and still go through to this day. The criticism that I sometimes get from my evangelical family that they don't understand why the candles? Why the incense? Why the chanting? Why the crossing yourself? Why all of these things? Maybe, up front, don't make the mistake that I made. Please don't. My encouragement to you as you study what it means to be a Lutheran is to just study quietly. You don't have to have these conversations with your family. Don't feel compelled to be in these conversations and defend something if maybe you don't understand it yet. It's not understanding it is okay. I'm 39 years old. I don't have this all figured out. I'm just kind of forest gumping my way through it like everybody else. So don't make the mistake I made. If you want to learn what it means to be Lutheran, I'm going to hook you up with some resources here in this video to help make that easy for you to do on your own but you're 15 and you've got at least three more years where we need to have a catechism conversation. So we're going to open up the catechism to the explanation of the fourth commandment because I would not be faithful to God's word if I didn't admonish you with this. The fourth commandment, buddy, honor your father and your mother. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not despise or anger our parents and other authorities, but honor them, serve and obey them, love and cherish them. Their vocation as your parents, Brendan, is to raise you in the faith, to bring you to God's house, and to care for you in body and soul and every physical need. And while you are a minor and while you are in their care, your vocation is to obey your parents. So this might mean you don't get to go to a Lutheran church at all. Not until you're 18 anyways. This might mean that you shouldn't have these arguments with your parents. You should just say, okay, mom. All right, dad. Okay. I would encourage you for the next three years until you are an adult to just be kind and gentle and obedient with your parents. Now, in the meantime, what you do on your own time is your business. And so 
in that regard, in the description below, I'm providing a link to a 25 part series on the historic liturgy of the church, the Lutheran church. This was instrumental in me, even as a, a kind of a long time Lutheran by that point, instrumental to me in understanding all of the good gospel goodness that comes to us in the divine service inside the Lutheran church. So I'm going to hook you up with that. I would encourage you then to continue to listen to Issues Etc. Christian Talk Radio because they address every issue that's going on in this world from a focused biblical lens centered on who Christ is and what he's done for you. And there's nothing, that's, that's Lutheranism. Who is Jesus and what has he done for you? So there's a free resource for you right there, issues, etc. I would also encourage you if you want to listen to better quality Christian music in your everyday life, there's Lutheran Public Radio. It's free, it's online. Their, church, their library spans 2,000 years of solid confessional Orthodox Christian music without the garbage of whatever's going on on the local Christian fundraising channel on the radio. I would also, also encourage you to get involved with Pastor Whedon's podcast, The Word of the Lord Endures. It is a verse-by-verse -verse Bible study with Pastor Whedon, who is probably one of the most charismatic people you will ever hear preach God's word. And it's not the evangelical, what does this verse mean to you, what does this verse mean to you, cycle of narcissetics interpreting ourselves into the text. Pastor Whedon draws out of the text that which God intended to say to you, for you, all centered on who Jesus is, what he's done, and why he gives it to you for free. So those are some of the resources. Additionally, lastly, buddy, I would love to send you a copy of the Book of Concord, our Lutheran Confessions, but that's kind of pricey. So until you can go onto Concordia Publishing House's website and get these things for yourself, bookofconcord.org is a free resource where you can read our Lutheran Confessions, everything that we believe, teach, and confess as Lutherans. I would encourage you to spend a little bit of money, though, Go to cph.org and get yourself a copy of Luther's Small Catechism. Because it doesn't matter that you're 15 and I'm 39. This catechism is a book of instruction into the Christian faith written for children that I still read to this day. And I read it to my children too. Look, buddy, you're not going to hell for wanting to have a crucifix in your house. You're not going to hell for wanting to engage in ancient worship and not modern revivalism. Believe and trust in the promises of Christ and not what your evangelical family has to say. Be kind and courteous to them. Part of the Eighth Commandment to not bear false witness, Luther says that we are to explain everything in the kindest way. Give them the benefit of the doubt that they love you and they're concerned for your spiritual well-being. They're your parents. They're your family. That's what they're supposed to do. So use these resources Hell, so shameless plug. Keep watching this channel, buddy. Use the resources that I've provided. They will bring you to more. But for now, for now, bud, you're 15 years old and you have to obey your parents. And that sucks and that's hard and I know. But when you're 18, man, come on back. I will help you find a good, solid, confessional Lutheran church in your area that you can attend. So thank you so much. For reaching out. Thank you for your words of encouragement. I'm glad that I, I feel like a failure as a representation of Lutheranism, but it's good to see that it still helps even just one person. Never be afraid to comment. Never be afraid to ask me questions. Never be afraid to ask me to explain something in a video that maybe you don't understand about us as Lutherans. I would love to do it. So Brendan, until my next video, Brendan, may God bless you. The grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.